into fandom and explore comics, gaming, sci-fi, and fantasy, all from a red pill perspective. Hold on to your phasers, it's time for a nerdgasm! Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Christian Chiesel, and with me again, as always, is Dean Esme. How's it going, Dean? Hi, Christian. Now, <laughs> now I'm just, I'm just now that I'm Rachel. Yeah, Jim, we're, we're just Jim, joking. This Jim, is Jim, Jim, Jim. Kelvarn. And with me is Rachel Edwards. And Christian is somewhere around here. Christian? Christian, where are you? Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. What the fuck's going on? Who the fuck do you say you were? Well, I started off being you, but what the I'm hell? Trying to take my job? Sure, why not? <laughs> Everybody, yes, I am the real Christian Chessel, the one and only. Welcome to Tales from the Infrared. Uh, with us again is... Jim Kelvarn and Rachel Edwards. And of course, running the back room is James Huff. Hi! And uh, unfortunately, Dean could not be with us. Um, there's a possibility that it might be able to uh, jump in a little later on, but he's extremely busy right now, what with the uh, AVFM conference. And so he can't he's be dead with to us. us. Yeah. He's dead to us. Completely dead to us. But, uh, but, uh, let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Jim, why don't you take us through our topics for today and, uh, a quick summary of what we'll be talking about? Ah, so I'm the one that gets to do it this week. I thought we were giving that to Rachel, but all right. Well, we can give it to Rachel. How about you? Affirmative action. <laughs> yes, Title Nine. Oh, crap. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Actually, a rather serious topic. Elliot Roger is now a nerd, and nerd culture is full of misogyny. Just a quick glance around the internet and you'll find more news articles on Elliot Roger, this time painting him as one of the nerds. Supposedly, nerd culture has produced killers and rapists, because penis. These feminist males trying to score points with females are going out of their way to point out how they are the good men, and everything is wrong with the culture they were brought up in. The only bright and shining star in this is a quote from one article, but only when turned back towards the audience that it was intended for. Quote, when you see yourself as the victim, the women, originally geek, bullied by the men, originally jocks, 
can ever see yourself can you ever see yourself as the bully unquote to those morons that are now attacking nerds i say thus fuck you 10 takeaways from E3 2014 press day. A mecca for gaming developers, journalists, and corporate insiders. The essential trade show for video game geeks. The Electronic Entertainment Expo, uh, more commonly known as E3, has been the industry's can't-miss digital dog and pony show since 1995. More than 48,000 people converge on the downtown Los Angeles for the event, which boasts a (laughs) <laughs> cacophonic maze of uh, company kiosks manned by conspicuously photogenic booth babes to lure in attendees for hands-on demos with state-of-the-art technology. Next up is a Culture Report, Comic-Con's harassment problem. Another hotbed of sexual harassment is called San Diego Comic-Con. Once again, we see feminist ideology attacking everything male that, and, and that they can't control. We hear about the female cosplayers being harassed, groped, or hugged a little too tightly. But this isn't the worst part. A group called Geeks for Consent is petitioning Comic-Con to amend its code of contact for the, uh, conduct for the con. The petition includes wonderful additions to the already strict code of conduct to include on-site support, signs reminding people not to harass, and harassment reporting mechanism. As soon as women invade male spaces, males start getting pushed out. And this is not something that we haven't seen before. However, geeks are not known for standing up for themselves. I think it's time for them to start. And back to you. (laughs) All right, so uh, let's, I guess let's uh, get into it. I mean, Elliot Rogers is uh, apparently a topic for another show. It's a very, very tragic event, and before we go forward, I just want to say that our, our, our thoughts and our respect goes out to uh, the families of, of those who were lost. Um, it's not a topic to joke about. However, it is a topic that uh, apparently now Elliot Rogers, uh, Elliot Rogers is, be, is being called a nerd, and now nerd culture is under some attack. Jim, um, what do you got for us on this topic? Well, first off, I'm, I'm going to reiterate exactly what you said. I mean, it, it is a very tragic event, and, you know, you, you just any time you hear about this stuff, you feel so horrible for the families. You can't, not just the families of the women, of course, families of the women, Families of the women, you know, women are more important than men, but also for the families of the men who died. And it's disturbing to see people just steamrolling over those bodies to push this agenda of women good, men bad, and now geeks bad because penis, I guess. I, I, I want to I wanna also say that this the importance of this is this is not he, he is not a representative of nerd culture he is not a representative of anything they've tried to paint him as he was a psychopath and they he was using, a misanthrope well he was he was a, I would say both misanthrope and psychopath but the importance of what we need to look at is he's not an actual representative of any of these things they're painting him as, but these people are trying to demonize, you know, the men's rights movement, nerd culture by utilizing him and his actions. Yeah, I think it's really, really disgusting what they're doing and really what they're doing is taking away from what's really important about this. And it is of course the families. Instead of focusing on the families, consistently they've just been using this as misdirection. They, they need somebody to blame, and, you know, we're an easy target. And I, I understand that. But really, this should always, first and foremost, be about the people that are suffering the most. And that are that's the families out there who lost kids. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just... 
it's a mess. You know, and, and one of the one of the news stories that we had here, of course, came from uh, the paper of the town from the town where I, I went to college. And I thought, well, I thought these people would know better. Uh, you know. No, they don't. They don't. Well, actually, whether they know better or not is not the issue. The, well, the you know, issue there's is a, there's a lot of a, there's a great deal of nerds out in Charleston. A great deal of of them, and uh, you know that's where I did a lot of or some of my tabletop role playing, and that's where I know that there are a couple of people that have good LARP groups and everything like that. You know, so there there is a very heavy nerd culture that does exist within Charleston, South Carolina. And if they're listening right now, hey, <laughs> you know, we I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> but really, it, it is really absolutely disgusting what they're doing. Well, Farnest in the uh, in the chat is, is pointing out, it's not just feminists who find a way to demonize people into something pure evil. They dehumanize to make it a non-human problem and distance themselves. And I'll agree with that. It, it makes it easier at, as, you know, as, as former member of the military, it, it makes it easier when you don't look at some, someone as human to attack and vilify and treat them as horrible, horrible monsters, whatever, however you want to put it. It makes it easier to do that. But that's not, a, that's not something a human being should do do except in say time of war when it's my life or somebody else's and and it's not something inherent to to feminists either there are uh, a number of lobby groups out there just chomping at the bit waiting for the next disaster like this so that they can push their own agenda uh their own agenda uh just as an example the gun control lobby um, the gun control lobby, when the uh, Newtown, Connecticut shooting happened, they were all over that. They were also all over Elliot Roger. They were all. Uh, <coughs> they were also all over the uh, cinema shooting, um, over uh, the Dark Knight Rises, uh, and it's it's not really just feminists who do it. It's the it's lobbies in general will exploit whatever they possibly can to push their agenda. Well, it's, it, I, I would agree with you. It's not just feminists. And, you know, you want to make it right-left. It's, it's not even right-left. The Republicans would do that to the Democrats when they get the chance. The Democrats do yeah. that to the Republicans when they get the chance. Exactly. It's, it's people who are trying to force the issue for the way they want things to go. And oftentimes, they're, they're mis, miseducated. They're for lack of a better term, uh, they're, they're unwilling to see any point of view other than their own. Very well, close-minded. They're, willf- they're yeah. willfully ignorant of the yes. situation as a whole. I, d- I don't think they understand... Uh, I don't think they really understand nerd culture. A lot of this is really just an, an escape. You know, we, we do these things because we like them. There is nothing involved outside of that. There's nothing inherently violent about video games, there's there's no proof that it causes violence, and, and you know with the Elliot Rogers situation, he killed more people with knives, but you don't see people moving to ban knives at all. No, no, because it doesn't fit the it doesn't fit the story they're trying to tell, and that's exactly what it is. Is it's a story they're trying to tell, and most people aren't going to take the time to look at what's really going on. I've had a couple of people sit there and say, yeah, we need to ban guns because of Elliot Roger and what he did. And I'm like, uh, he killed more of the same number of people with knives as he did with guns. Yeah, and it was strong. He, it was he, the same amount. Sorry. Yeah, and he also injured far more with cars. Should we also ban knives in cars? And they can't answer that. They're looking for someone to blame, and we're, we're an easy target. I mean... They, it's something that they don't fully understand. And, I mean, everybody... It, uh, Christian was right. It isn't just feminists. It really is everybody. They're, they're threatened by a, a bunch of people who are very, very smart. Probably smarter than them, oftentimes. And, you know, they're just going to move to 
to to ban things that they that are even just loosely related to them. Intellectual privilege. Are you <laughs> are, 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 are you a uh, intellectual apologist now, Rachel? <laughs> I make no apologies. Good. But uh, I think it also goes slightly deeper than that. I think it's um, inherent in human beings. It's something that's been around for a while. I, I first this this quote I first read in in uh, X Men comics way back. I think early '80s when I first started getting into X Men, which is people fear what they don't understand, and instead of taking the time to try and understand it, and taking the time to try and uh, understand what the what what geeks are like and how they are. They'd rather just attack them and make people fear them. And, and, and all the geeks I, and nerds I've ever hung out with, because I, I go to Comic-Con whenever I get a chance. I'll go to every Comic-Con I can. I mean, San Diego Comic-Con used to be in my backyard for a while. I, I went there every chance I got. And they're, the geeks there are so much fun to hang out with. They're, they're a blast. Even for normal people who don't hang around with geeks normally, going to a Comic-Con is... It's almost a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who gets a chance to do it. Yeah, and, you know, i got to be honest. When, when people go out of their way to say things about, about nerdy guys, I mean, I really feel just disturbed by what they're trying to say. I mean, I, I've dated only nerds throughout my life, and they've been nothing but good to me. A across the board, they've been, they've been my friends, they've been my companions, and, and to just say shit like uh, that they feel entitled to women's bodies, and, and that they're inherently disrespectful and misogynistic, it, it's, it's deeply... <sighs> I mean, I, I don't even know how to ar articulate just how angry that makes me. If if there's if there's ever a group of of men that do not feel entitled to women's bodies, it would be nerds. Well, I mean, I've, most, I've said most that most nerds that I know, um, and and. I know a lot, are actually too afraid to be forward about their, uh, their feelings when, when it comes to the women that they, they like or, or that they fall in love with because they're so afraid of that rejection. Yes. Yeah. And, and also, also um, I've, uh, having been to Comic-Con, I've seen how nerds act around the booth babes half the time it, it's a, a large group of them and only one of them actually walks up to them and that's from a lot of pressure from their buddies sitting there going go for it dude go for it come on come on you, you can do it and, and then then after the one guy does it and the girl sits there and shows that she's nice sweet and actually a decent human being and likes th these guys, the other ones are willing to go up and take the risk of saying, hi, how are you? Can I get a picture? And that's generally as far as it goes. But yeah. most of them don't even look the, w the, the girls in the eye. Well, getting, getting back to Elliot Rogers, can, can, we just, can we just say... Okay, possibly Elliot Rogers was a nerd, but his no, being a nerd no. had nothing to do with why he committed the atrocity that he did. No, I, I won't. I won't go go with that one, Christian, because we, everybody has some uh, has some little bit of geekiness in in them. He liked Pokemon. Okay, M most uh, kids who grew up in the last 20 years, like Pokemon. I so still that would, like Pokemon. Okay, you still like Pokemon. Yeah. That would mean every kid who's grown up in the last 20 years is a psychopath. Yeah. And, and no, I know a lot of... No, the majority I, I, of, I think, you're, I think you're, you're not understanding me properly. I mean, no, nobody... Know, like, 
nobody really knows anything about Elliot Roger except what we see and what we read. So what we see in his YouTube videos, what we read in his manifesto, and what has been released publicly uh, about him. Uh, we, we do know that he was treated for some mental illness or mental disorder. Uh, he, he was seeing uh, some form of mental health uh, uh, doctor. A group of therapists. Uh, a, a group, group of, of therapists, therapists, and he was prescribed certain medications. We don't know what medication, at least I don't know what uh, medication. Risperdal, uh, Risperdal, from what I understand, and he wasn't taking it. Oh, Risperdal? Okay. Um, but, I mean, like, no, nobody can say he was or he wasn't a nerd. Uh, he may have been a nerd, but I reject the, I reject the claim that him being a nerd had anything to do with his decision. Well, I had anything I, to do with, with his actions. I will go a step further and say, even if he was a nerd, he, he was in no way, in no way, any, a representative of nerd culture. At best, the best I would give them any connection between him and being a representative of any type of nerd culture is he is the extreme, um, <sighs> Oh God, he's well, the extreme. Know, he is the so far extreme beyond a anything even most of the extremists would extremist nerds would would allow. Well, yeah. I'm not. Okay, I, I'm not saying that. You know, for the accepting for the sake of argument that he is a nerd is the same as saying that he was a representative of nerd culture. Those, those two are not mutually exclusive. We, could ex we can, for the sake of argument, accept that he was a nerd, but that doesn't make him a representative of nerd culture, and that doesn't mean that him being a nerd had anything to do with his atrocities and, and his actions. That I'll there, agree with. Yeah, uh, there, are terrible, there are terrible people in every single group of people. And, and there's nothing that you can do. You, you can't always tell who's that ticking time bomb and who isn't. I mean, for example, he, I believe he played lots of World of Warcraft, and that would make Jim a ticking time bomb, but he's not! <laughs> would make me a ticking time bomb, apparently, too, because yeah. I played a lot of World of Warcraft. I mean, yeah, well, I'm, I'm back to playing it. I'm back to playing bit, it. But, I mean, it, it's just, it's utterly ridiculous to sit there and try and make that very, very loose connection. And it's an insult to everybody who's ever really been heavily involved in nerd culture. I agree. The, the fact of the matter is, there are psychopaths and sociopaths. There are some very dangerous people in the world. There are people who are not mentally stable. And they're people of every race, creed. They're people of every interest. There are going to be nerds. Both sexes. You know, there are going to be nerds who are mentally unstable. There are going to be men and women who are mentally unstable. There are going to be whites and blacks who are mentally unstable. It, it doesn't help to use the groups that they belong to as labels for the reasons they do what they do. It, it just does not help. Well, I don't think they're trying you, to help you can't, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, actually, there, there's a really, really great quote by, by Joe Rogan. I'm going to try to remember it. I think he said something to the effect of, we have, we have a mental illness problem disguised as a gun control problem. And, damn it, I can't remember that quote. I know it's on my Facebook. Yeah, I would, uh, I would, uh, I would agree to... To that extent, to be perfectly honest, and this is really what it is about. There are a lot of, of, of men, specifically, who who really need access, ready access to, to mental health care services, and I would go so far as to say that we need to just reform the entire mental health care system, just, just the way that we go about it. I mean, it, it really is ridiculous as it stands, and it really is a huge problem. I mean, I've been through through the system, I've, I've seen a lot of things, 
and it, it's just really a mess, especially when it comes to to the way that they go about treating treating men. Well, here, here's the actual quote. Uh, this country has a mental health problem disguised as a gun problem and a tyranny problem disguised as a security problem. Um, isn't it about time we stop disguising our problems? I would, have, I, I would say that we need to stop disguising the problems. We need to look at the problems as they are for what they are. Because if we don't, we're just we're trying to fix... A, a broken dam with just putting a finger in one leak when there are thousands of leaks. And I have to agree with that. So uh, we move it to the next topic? I guess. I mean, that's... It's... I, I think it's a little bit foolish that, uh, you know, we have three... Uh, three sources that are trying to claim Elliot Rogers was a nerd and that him being a nerd had something to do with uh, with his actions and uh, I, ha I, I think it's absolutely disgusting that the, the, the issue is being swept under the rug or disguised as something else rather than actually approached uh, objectively to, to try and find an actual solution to what the problem is. And three sources may not seem like a lot, but I still find it disgusting. Well, I'm sure if I looked, I mean, that was just a quick cursory glance. I found, I, I found those three articles. They were the top thing when you hit, uh, when you type in uh, a Google search of nerd culture. That's it. Yeah. It, it's really bad. I mean, there there were even more. Um, there are even more articles have it trying to tie Elliot Roger to being an MRA. But that's you know that's another story. And uh, it, it, I, I of course followed it back, and you know it was of course the Daily Cost article. A bunch of people just citing the Daily Cost article, which of course cited bent boobs, and uh, it was just a mess. And we all know how how. Uh... Yeah. How respectable man boobs is for a source. Yeah, we all know uh, the wonderful, wonderful journalism that David Futrell puts out every week. <laughs> yes, oh. well, I, I have a special, special amount of love to send to David Futrell. So, David, if you're listening, fuck you. Well, oh, don't, yeah, don't don't get him riled up. He'll say that we're violent. I yeah, don't you, care. you know, but it's okay. You know what? Fuck you, David Futrell. Fuck you. you, you fuck you, you in the nose. Futrell is probably the worst fucking source for information on the entire internet. So who gives a fuck if he thinks we're being violent? Fuck David Futrell. Fuck him right in the goat ass. I it's think we're all shit. unanimous on that. Hold on. Let, yeah. Let's ask yeah. our back room. James, your thoughts? <laughs> I don't like the guy at all. I really don't. Uh, I, I think he's a simpering idiot. Well put. Well, I guess this brings us to our second topic of the show, which is E3. And uh, this is the topic I am most uh, excited by. Uh, I've, I've seen the conferences. I've seen what they have to offer. And Are your pants still dry, Christian? They are. Okay. <laughs> it's, it, it wasn't as exciting as last year's E3. Last year's E3, it was a battle between Microsoft and Sony. Like, it was essentially a death match in press conference form. This year, it was very tame. Uh, I'm, very dis I'm a Vita owner, and I'm very disappointed in the lack of news about brand new Vita games. In fact, uh, Sony seems to be pushing the Vita as a companion device to the PlayStation 4 rather than a standalone handheld gaming device. Uh, I'm a little disappointed at the fact that there was no official announcement about Majora's Mask 3D, uh, considering that Majora's Mask 3D, it's the one game 3DS owners want, 
after Ocarina of Time 3D was released because those two games go hand in hand. Majora's Mask is essentially a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time. And they're just... It's a perfect follow-up. And Nintendo knows. Um, Ayanuma, in, a, in an interview, acknowledged that they know the fans want Majora's Mask 3D. And he's been teasing it. There was the Majora's Mask on the wall of Ravio Shop slash Link's House in A Link Between Worlds. Uh, Zelda Williams, uh, Robin Williams' daughter, when she came out uh, for the celebrity match of Super Smash Brothers at E3, she was holding a life-size uh, Majora's Mask. Um, in Hyrule Warriors, there's also a special move where you actually grapple the Death Moon from Majora's Mask and pull it down. So they're hinting at it like crazy, and they're teasing their their customers with it, but there's no official announcement. It's and foreplay, Christian. It, they, they have to bring out the foreplay and uh, get everybody hot and, hot and bothered yeah. and wet for it. Well, I mean, it, this has been going on for three years now. I think it's about goddamn time they make an official announcement. It's just like Bethesda with Fallout 4. You know, for the last two years, Fallout 4 announcement, Fallout... Uh, are you working on Fallout 4? And nothing. Absolutely nothing. They sent, uh, they sent some guys down to Boston to do some scouting. Uh, there's rumors that Fallout 4 is going to be... Uh, uh, it, it's it's going to be set in Boston, Massachusetts, because in Fallout lore, that's where the Commonwealth is. That's where the Institute is. So, but there's no official announcement about Fallout 4, and there's no official announcement about Majora's Mask. It's just, give us something. Are you working on it or not? If you're not, tell us. They're not confirming, and they're not denying. Which well, is have, it's just, it's maddening. I have to agree with you. I mean, I, I know, I like having some announcement. Um, you know, I... I Certain games, like, uh, what is it, Mass Effect, as soon as Mass Effect 3 was on sale, they pretty much announced that there's going to be a Mass Effect 4. Uh, Dragon Age, a couple months after Dragon Age 2, they announced Dragon Age Inquisition. And, and yeah, it's nice to have the announcement, but sometimes that little bit of teasing is fun, but come on, there, there's su such a thing as teasing so much that people lose interest. Yeah, and when you do it, or like, okay, I agree with you. If they teased for maybe a couple of months, two or three months leading up to an official announcement, I think that would be fine. But three years? Three years of this shit? Yeah. I mean, you gotta, the fans, the fans love it. Unfortunately, most of the fans will sit there and once they announce it, they'll they'll pre-order it and do whatever. But you know, I think some of the fans need to start saying, "No, you guys are you guys are just overdoing this, and we're not supporting you uh, the way you're doing this anymore." Which kind of sucks because Majora's Mask is such an incredible game. It's in in my opinion the single best game in the ser in the franchise because it was so dark. Well, and that's it, saying it was, a lot, considering the Link was... <laughs> Legend of Zelda was a, a phenomenal franchise. It is, and I, in my opinion, Majora's Mask is just the, it's the best of the franchise. It's, it's just so dark, and it's so gritty. I mean, people actually die, not just like enemies and bosses, but people actually die in Majora's Mask. Good guys. It's it's a very well yeah it's just it's a very dark story uh, well, it, for a Zelda game. I, I think that's actually w one of the things people f seem to forget is sometimes those dark stories are so much more engaging than the than the cute little fairy tale. The fairy tale is nice and all, but often the dark story is what gets people there. The the dark story is what gets us to the fairy tale, and you need. In my opinion, you need both. You need the dark stories that show the the pain, the hurt, the th the things that really have got driven the character to that that high point. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, mainly uh, what I've been hearing about in terms of E3 is that Anita Sarkeesian has another hair up her ass about uh, uh, an assassin. Another assassin. one? Yeah, uh, yeah. Wait, wait as, in, as in she doesn't always have one in her upper ass? Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Uh, maybe, is it is it, uh, is it correct to say that she's probably got like, practically a tree up her ass at this point? I mean, I'd say a stick, but I don't think that that really accounts for just the mom- momentous thing that is stuck up her ass. But anyway, uh, it, it has to do with um, Assassin's Creed Unity, which, uh, from what I hear, takes place in the French Revolution. And she's like, oh my gosh, they're cutting off heads. I'm like, bitch, it's the fucking French Revolution. How are they that- not cutting off heads? It wasn't just well- that. It was also that they removed a female playable character to cut costs because they were going to go up over budget otherwise. Um, it, it was going to cost more to just render something completely different to have that female character there. I think it has to do with... Well, uh, it's, it really has to do with uh, development time. I mean, I know a lot of people have been getting all up in arms about the fact that Assassin's Creed Unity does not have a female playable character uh, but it does cost development time because you have to have your modelers model every piece of customizable clothing to a female model they have to model a female character they have to animate it which means they have to bring in female actors to mocap animations they have to bring in female voice actors to read off every bit of voice uh, every bit of dialogue in a female voice then they have to code it all into the game and texture it it's yeah, just and it's, it's way that, too much like a yeah. lot of people are saying oh it's two days worth of work fuck no, you it's, it's two it's days it yeah, actually no. doubles it actually almost doubles the work yeah, yeah, it's 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 like, and so what if there's no fucking female playable character? I mean, there have been playable female characters in the franchise in the past. My favorite Assassin's Creed game is Assassin's Creed Three Liberation on the PlayStation Vita, and it was eventually re-released in HD form on the PlayStation Three and on PC via Steam, and, and it Xbox. has. And Xbox, and it has a female, a, a female lead character. You play a female character, a black female character, by the way, who is freeing slaves. But that's besides the point. Uh, it's not like female playable characters don't exist in the series. It's just they don't exist in this one particular game. And but I don't see. I, I think Sarkeesian's got the hair up her ass because, or I'm sorry, the tree up her ass. For among other things, the fact that they had it once, they can do it again. Well, you know what? If uh, okay, uh, Sarkeesian, here's one for you. You did you did uh, all your videos on no budget. Why don't you give back the hundred and sixty thousand dollars and do it again? Uh, let's be honest. She hasn't really. What this is really about is she isn't that kind of gamer. She doesn't like those kinds of hack and slash games or, or shooting games or anything that involves blood or gore. She'd rather play something like Candy Crush or, or, or fucking Bejeweled. That's her idea of the game. Or maybe something like uh, like Mario. But I guess, oh wait, they're saving a princess. That's misogynistic. Well, Not you know her. what? If that's, if, if that's what she wants to play, that's fine. She can play it. And I'll go on record as saying this. If she wants to play that, she can play that. But when she starts coming into other things she doesn't want to play and doesn't like it, fuck you. Get the fuck out. You don't like it, leave. I mean, this bitch does not need to be giving advice to gaming companies if she can't even handle a game with a little bit of blood. I mean, this is... <sighs> You know, this is what happens in an action game. There's going to be blood, there's going to be violence, there's going to be action. That's that's part of it. And, that's and the definition had, of an action. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a exactly. game called Assassin's Creed. Exactly. Is she really good a bitch that I mean, there's assassinations in it? I mean, it's yeah, right apparently there. she is. It's right there. It's right in the title. According to that logic, I mean, shouldn't we be... Uh, shouldn't we be... Uh, uh, God damn it! Fucking brain fart. 
Well, you know, I need to start. Shouldn't you be angry that a baseball, a game called MLB 2014, has baseball in it? <laughs> oh my gosh, the baseball NH- NHL 2014. It's it, it it's hockey. Yeah, yeah the, the sticks are so phallic. It's oppressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, you know what? I, I, I oh, I there's not enough female fuck. playable characters in Madden. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Women can't win the Stanley Cup. It's like you know what? <laughs> yeah, go for it. I, I dare you. It, it's fucking ridiculous that she just fucking picks and chooses, and, and it's it's ridiculous. They, I mean, for anybody who's involved in gaming, and if you're involved with the higher companies, please, please do not hire Sarkeesian. This bitch does not know what she's talking about. Hire a real gamer girl. S- someone good. Hire Rachel. Well, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't play as much as I would like to. I don't even own a console because of Yeah, the- but you're still, you're still more knowledgeable about, about all this than, uh, yeah, than you yeah. ever will be. As, that's true. That is true. And I, I do, I do at least play, play a bit of Minecraft and Killing Floor and shit like that. But you know, yeah. <laughs> I need to get you on uh, uh, the Wolf Among Us. Are, are yep. we gonna Are we gonna play Killing Floor, Jim? We should play Killing yes. Floor. You can Why be not? the champion. I'll uh, be the far list. Far list you in the, the chat dude, actually the, has I'll, a very, 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 cha- very good point. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody here, you know, speaking uh, on the show, has any problem with developers making more female-oriented games. And Farless has a really good point. It's not about changing the games that exist. It's about making more. And you know what? If, uh, if, 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 if a group of feminists want to learn how to develop games and they want to make or they want to create a development studio, that's fine. Go right ahead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just go right ahead. Like, do it. Do it. Well, I, make the games I, I you want to play. That is, that is what development houses do. I mean, I, the development house, sure, they're there to make money, but they essentially make the games that they want to play as gamers. And and if, if a feminist developer wants to make feminist-oriented games, I'm all for it. Go for it. They're going to have to compete uh, in the same arena as existing developers, but they're, they're entirely free to do so. I'm not I agree going to do you, anything Christian. to stop them. I, I completely agree with you. The thing with it is, is if you check, if you watch their attitude, it's not about wanting. They don't want to actually do the work to get there. They don't want to fail. They want someone else to do the work. Someone else to fail yeah, they, on they, their they behalf. Be, they want to be the ones to bitch and moan and have somebody else do the fucking backbreaking labor. They're princess. Uh, what is it? Uh, damsels in distress. Yeah. Exactly. Hi, I'm. Feminist Barbie, and I want to fuck up your games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to do that. It probably scared oh. the shit out of everybody. <laughs> no, that was just awesome. I, but uh, let's 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 uh, move along. What else was announced at E3? I mean, uh, did anything catch your eye from the EA conference, the uh, the Ubisoft conference, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo? Um. Yep. <laughs> I yeah. It's... What what about Destiny? What, what what are your thoughts on Sony releasing a Destiny bundle with a uh, a glacier white PlayStation Four? Destiny bundle. Uh. Oh wait, that was actually a game I was interested in, but I I've been so busy I hit, couldn't keep up with it. <sighs> Fuck. Well, essentially, uh. A couple of weeks ago, Sony put in a new patent for a brand new PlayStation 4 revision. And it was just a slight revision. Uh, some people were speculating that they were replacing the disk drives uh, because there were uh, some issue with the disk drives being very loud in the PlayStation 4. But apparently, it's a glacier white. So it, it's the exact same internals. It's the sa- exact same guts. But instead of it being... Uh, instead of it using a black chassis, it's a glacier white chassis. And they're going to be releasing that with Destiny bundled in. Yeah. 
And, you know, it, like I said, it's I, I'm not a big PlayStation fan. I, don't don't get me wrong. PlayStation. The only reason I actually have a PlayStation, to be completely honest, is for PlayStation exclusive games. That's it. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't. I, I would never buy another PlayStation again. It's not that I have a problem with with so. Well, actually, I do have a problem with Sony that actually goes back to Star Wars Galaxies. One of these days, I'll I'll tell you about that one. But uh, for the most part. I'm actually very happy with Microsoft and Xbox. I prefer the control scheme. I prefer... I actually prefer most of the people that I tend to meet on Xbox versus the people I, I meet on PlayStation. And, yeah, it's... But, yeah, Destiny was actually one that really caught my eye. And it's been, I think a couple. I, I think it was like right at the beginning of the announcement. They they announced it, and I saw it, and I'm like really salivating over this game. And then I get busy, and life takes over. Yeah, I think everybody here has been a little bit busy with everything with the conference and every all the things surrounding it. And I haven't had as much time to look at that. But I mean, I'm I'm excited to be perfectly honest with. Every, every time E3 comes out, I eventually go and I look at the videos, and I'm like, oh, look, those are the games I can't play because I don't have a console. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also, there's also something that really did catch my eye big time. It's the fact that uh, they're, they're bringing back some of the old games. Some of the old, uh, like Grim Fandango. Uh, th Ooh. They're bringing... Yeah, they're bringing back they're bringing back uh, the entire Halo collection, all for Xbox One. I mean, this stuff. Yeah, I would love to see that. I I would actually pay money to have it on on uh, my newer consoles because you know I have all the way back to PlayStation One. I have a GameCube. I have the original Xbox, and I would love to be able to play some of my old old Xbox games, and I would even be willing to pay pay extra money to get them on the Xbox One. Well, with the Master Chief collection, I think it's four Halo games. Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they're all remastered in HD, and they're all uh, online accessible, so you'll be able to play them all multiplayer. Even Halo 1, apparently, which originally did not have any multiplayer at all. Multiplayer wasn't brought in until Halo 2. Right, and the original and Halo. And you're gonna get all four games for sixty bucks. One price, yeah. sixty bucks. It's the entire collection for four games. You can't plus go an wrong extra with that price. Plus an extra hundred maps. Yeah, it's like you cannot go wrong with that. I mean, no. Sure, I think there's been too many re-releases and remasters of of older games uh, early on in this generation, but I think. I think the Halo, the Master Chief collection, an exception could be made for that. Well, I, I wouldn't just go with an exception for that one. I'm talking about the groundbreaking games such as, you know, Halo, uh, going back a little ways, Metal Gear Solid. Um, yeah, they showed the Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom Pain. Yeah. I've, oh my god, I can't wait for that one. But I didn't like how they actually had to... They, they actually split it up into two different games. Yeah, uh, but they, they're, they're only charging, I think, 20 bucks each for them. So you get... Uh, yeah, you get, I think that the Phantom Pain is going to be like nineteen ninety nine, And the, uh, the first Metal Gear Solid Five, I can't remember what it was called. Um, but that's also... I think that's also 20 bucks. So, I mean, you get the entire game for 40 bucks, which is $20 less than what a game typically sells for. Yeah, and, and I think that's the way games are going to start going, is they're going to start breaking up a little bit more to allow better, easier development, uh, you know, more downloadable content for those people who want it, and just basically selling generally the base game engine. And... I mean, I know that games have been going up, but honestly, the price is starting to become cost prohibitive, and you 
and I'll bet if you look, and I'll I'll probably do some research before the next game, uh, the next uh, show, to find out if game sales have been dropping steadily. They haven't. That's the thing. Triple A game sales might have been dropping slightly, but game sales are actually up, and it's indie games, games that are selling for ten, fifteen bucks a yeah. piece. That's true. That well, are really, really selling. I mean, you 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 think of like games like Fez and Limbo and Spelunky, uh, The Dead Linger. These Minecraft. are all smaller Minecraft. These are all smaller indie uh, indie games that are selling for less than half the cost of a AAA sixty dollar title. Well, and that's what I'm talking about. Those I mean, sales are skyrocketing. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. The cheaper games that, you know, it's it's more about the love of making the games you want to play and seeing who else wants to play them. That's what's coming out. That's what's coming to the forefront because the price of the AAA games, the uh, high-end uh, studios like Ubisoft, Square Enix, and, and whatnot, those are becoming cost-prohibitive to the average... To most gamers, I mean, sixty yeah, bucks is Sony. Like, Sony yeah. pulled a fast one. I mean, you're paying you're paying sixty bucks for Watch Dogs, uh, but here in Canada, so not only did Sony increase the price of their PlayStation Four by fifty bucks, so instead of three ninety nine, which was the launch price, it's now four forty nine here in Canada. But the games are also up by fifteen bucks each. So instead of paying fifty nine ninety nine, we're now paying seventy four ninety nine. Yeah, but the problem with that is, is they're 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 doing that to see if the market will bear it, and the best way to stop them from from milking gamers is by saying no, we're not going to do it. And yeah, it's going to suck. It's going to hurt not having some of your favorite games around, but in the long run, those games will come down in price. And they'll be, they will be forced to do what they're supposed to instead of taking advantage of the consumer. The consumer will take control of where the price is actually set because they will, for, they will cut into the profits of these companies and these companies will be forced to say, hey, if we want to make money, we want to stay around, we need to, we need to cut back. And I, I have to agree. I mean, indies, indie gaming is really where it's at now because a lot of the AAA developers are trying to gouge. Uh, you know, fuck, 75 bucks for a game? That's, I think that's... That's ridiculous. That is, that is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I, mean, I, no, I, especially I, remember, I remember being able to pick up Diablo 2 and uh, Lord of Destruction both for 40 bucks. Oh, I remember, you know, uh, I was a big StarCraft player. You know, you get both StarCrafts for like 30, 30, 45 bucks together. And now, you know, StarCraft 2, 60 bucks for the first one, 60 bucks for the, the expansion, 60 bucks for, for the next one. It's 180 bucks. Come on. Yeah, for one game. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are hurting, and if you have a choice between eating or buying the next game, I mean, which are you gonna pick? You're gonna pick eating, and then you're gonna well, look. Generally. You're gonna browse. You're gonna browse around for Steam sales. Is what you're gonna do. Yeah, and you're yeah. gonna find games like Hotline Miami on sale for two bucks. Yeah, and that's the thing is. You know, and it's something I've known for a long time. You go for the deals, you wait for those high-priced games to come down to 20 30 bucks. Yeah, you got to wait like six months. You probably have the entire storyline uh, spoiled for you, but you're able to get, still play it and get it get it for a hell of a lot more more uh, cost uh, cost a lot less cost prohibitive price. Yeah. Uh, uh, did did either of you see No Man's Sky? No. At E3? No. Oh, jeez. Wow. Does it look good? It does. It is. It's. Oh my god. Uh, it's a procedurally wow. generated game, so every single time you play, it's different. And there's no loading screen whatsoever, and you <gasps> could literally go from planet to planet. 
it's a, it's an exploration game and you literally go from planet to planet and the life forms and the ecosystems are all procedurally uh, generated so as soon as you approach a planet uh, it's it's already generating an ecosystem that's amazing and you could leave the planet travel through space get to the next one all without a loading screen what game is this? No Man's I, Sky. It looks yeah, gorgeous. Um, I think I need new panties. Throw, throw me, uh, <laughs> throw me, throw the, throw me that name into the chat there. Yeah. Farless actually put a YouTube video up for it. Like it looks absolutely gorgeous, and and I I really see a lot. A lot of games uh, going this route of of being random or or procedurally generated, uh, just because. Sure, I mean having a preset uh, map for your level uh, is going to allow you to make it look more stunning and add more detail to it. But it's going to be the exact same experience every every single time you play. Whereas with a procedurally generated uh, game. It's all pretty much randomized within a certain set of, of rules governing the uh, the procedural generator. So it, it's going to be different every single time you play, which could take yeah, and an eight-hour game and make it literally last you months. Well, that, that's the thing. is the re- A lot of the, the best games tend to be high replayability. I, I mean, so, some of my favorite games, you know, I... Like uh, I mentioned, Metal Gear. You know, you can you can come up with four, five, six different ways to beat each boss, or to get from point A to point B. You can do the fighting route. You can do the uh, stealth route. You can go like five different directions that that might get you there. You can choose to, but and, and the story changes a little bit. But if you're changing that much, like you said with No Man's Sky. Oh my god, yeah, it's not just going to be a couple of months, you, you could probably see people playing it, like, for years. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people are uh, getting more towards the uh, a lot of the multiplayer games, is because the other people actually change the game environment quite a bit. Yes, the, the experience is very much dependent on not only the static assets within the game, like the map and your weapon loadout, but it's also very much dependent on the other players that you're facing off against, as well as the other players who are on your team. Uh, different strategies every single round. You're never playing the same game. Agreed. But the uh, so everybody in chat, if you haven't clicked that link and watched that video, click the link that Farless provided in the chat. Take a look. This game is absolutely gorgeous, and just the the possibilities with this game are incredible. Yeah, it sounds amazing. To be perfectly honest, even you just uh, describing it sounds really great. But uh, I really do think it is going that route of, of the indie game, of uh, these randomly generated worlds. And I think that's one of the reasons Minecraft is popular and will probably continue to be popular. Because each time you can always generate a new world, and you can always customize things with, with different skins, and it, it's really great. And you can add modifications. I think those are really probably the games of the future, or the ones that will just continue to be a mainstay. I'll have to agree with that because you know the uh, the re- like I said, the replayability of any game is what is generally what uh, gets a game to to come back, get people to come back, and get it's part of what gets people invested in the games. Mass Effect. You know, you the you love the characters in Mass Effect. That's that's part of it. But if even if you love the characters, but you only pl- you can only play through the storyline, and it's just one storyline, no matter what you do. And I think that's part of what upset the fans at the very end of the Mass Effect trilogy. 
it's it, the replayability, the going back and playing it over and seeing what's different. That's what gets the the people to come back again and again and again, and to invest more into say downloadable content on something. Well, I mean, static experiences like that, like Mass Effect, they're fine as long as there's enough content to experience. I don't want to. I don't want to pay sixty bucks, or I guess now seventy five bucks, for a game that's only going to take me six to eight hours to complete, and it's going to be the same t- the same exact game the it's second not. time I played through. But with a game like Mass Effect, each game is about twenty four hours in length. Well, if you do so everything, it is it is about twenty four hours in length. But yeah, so you're talking it also, about seventy-two hours. Yeah, but you're also okay. talking about different thing, different little things changing through the course of each game. Yeah, like, but I mean, uh, like with, with a game like Mass Effect, I, I think the initial hype surrounding that game was a lot of people believe that the small details that changed were bigger than they actually were. Well, in I, the end, uh, well, okay, spoiler alert: if you haven't played it by now. You're probably not going to anyways. Uh, In the end, at the end of Mass Effect 3, you essentially had three choices. You could either destroy the Reapers, you could try and control the Reapers, or you just committed suicide and destroyed the... uh, No matter what you did, you destroyed the Mass Effect relays. There was a fourth fourth, uh, option that they... Oh, yeah, you could shoot the kid. You you could try and shoot the kid, but... Well, you could basically tell the kid to fuck off, but... Then the Reapers actually destroy Earth, and the entire force that you uh, that you've gathered to oppose them. The problem with it is, is at, at the beginning, and what they what they were actually promising before EA basically pulled the plug and said no, this is what we're giving them. And yes, it really was EA that said no. It was we're not going to give them what you promised. Knowing that, what I know about EA, I believe that. Uh, Bioware was promising stuff like every single little uh, choice you made from the very beginning. I mean, every small choice, whether you met Conrad Werner or not, back in Mass Effect 1, had an out- had some effect. It might be small, it might be huge. In l- not only Mass Effect 2, but also in Mass Effect 3, and in some cases, th- a small choice in Mass Effect 1 could have a huge outcome in Mass Effect 3. And that's what K- what Casey Hudson and Bioware were promising from the beginning. And I think that's part of why the fans got so upset with, Bio- with Bioware wh- when it was just basically, our choices meant nothing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that that is what a lot of people were pissed off about at the end of Mass Effect Three. But we are kind of getting a little off topic here. Uh, back yeah. to uh, three. Uh, so, yeah. what did catch you? What what caught your guys' eyes about? Well, like I said, I, I, I didn't the, get to... the older games. The older games coming back. You know. Uh, I think the new designs with uh, with Zelda looked pretty interesting, but that's yeah, Zelda U. Yeah, it, it's not it's not quite cartoony like the Wind Waker, but it's not quite green yeah. like Twilight Princess. It's yeah. somewhere in between. Yeah, uh, the art from that is what uh, what I ended up uh, stumbling across, even though I, I've been rather rather busy this week. Um, just uh, the look of the design for for uh, Assassin's Creed Unity looks pretty good. But uh, but that's all I've, I've been able to come across in the past week because I've been so busy. Well, I mean, speaking of Zelda U, um, get this. It's an open world game this time around. So instead of having... Instead of having to go to like the dungeons and the temples in a specific order, it's a completely open world and you could approach each area a, a, a ton of different ways... It's sort of like The Legend of Zelda meets Skyrim, almost. Wow. So well, it's see, not going to be the conventional Zelda experience. I, I'm going to be the, uh, the, the, the downer here. It's something that I've actually been upset with 
when I hear open world, it oftentimes the the so called open world experience is a little too open. You know what I'm saying? It, you you actually get lost, and sometimes you actually need help figuring out what to do next. Yeah, I, I could see that. Um, although I don't, it's it's not going to be exactly like Skyrim, so you're not going to have a bunch of different quest hubs around the world. So you're not going to be able to, you know, like in Skyrim, you're not going to be able to go to River Run and or was it River Run? Yes, River Run, and be able to do the Assassin's Quest line or the well, Thieves I'm, Quest. Line. I'm not yeah. just talking about that. I'm actually talking about some of the uh, what they call open world Spider-Man games, where literally half the time you're just swinging around New York City with nothing to do. Yeah, I don't quite think that they're going to go that route with it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they're still going to pretty much stick to uh, a, you know a designated quest, um, and. I think they are going to add little hints here and there to sort of, all right, well, here's what you can do. I mean, there's still this temple over here that you haven't been to and things like that. I mean, they, they, they'll probably figure all that out uh, during development because it's still in development. Uh, the only thing we actually got to see was a short, short trailer. So they're, they're, they're not releasing... And Ponyhill! Fifteen, and, and and I would probably guess that it's going to be closer to Christmas of 2015. So they still oh, have some I, time to figure out. I, that. I I hope they actually put that in there. I mean, I, I I don't know if any of the developers actually listened to us. I hope so. I'm going to once again reiterate: hire Rachel instead of Sarkeesian. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you've got at least something, you. You're you're walking through a town, and you know you you click on somebody, and they're like, hey, you know, you might want to go over here, or you might want to go over here. Yeah, that would be that would be great. At least have something that says, hey, you know, you're kind of stuck. You click on somebody, and they're like, yeah, well, you know, you might want to go over here, and it continues on so, some part of the storyline. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be great, but. Like it's it's actually something that kind of is upsetting me with Watch Dogs is it's an open world, but half the time I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do now? <coughs> the thing with Watch Dogs is, and get this, you're gonna laugh. They hyped that game up so much, and they kept delaying it and delaying it. Uh, my buddy's girlfriend started playing it about an hour before he left for work. She was done by the time he got home. Completely finished and 100% of the game in about nine hours. Seriously? Seriously. You mean I wasted 60 bucks on that thing? It, it, yeah. I mean, they're going to have DLC for it, and sure, you could play online, but I mean, come on. After all the hype that you, like, come on, like, really, nine hour game. For 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 next gen, something you hyped up, that that's no, that that has me disappointed. Agreed, and I think that kind of goes back to some of what we were talking about earlier with some of the games that this is what they're they've started doing, and that's why people are getting away from the sixty and seventy dollar games and going back to the indie games and paying a lot less. Mm -hmm. For what basically is delivering a lot more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a game like The Dead Linger, and I'll plug it here, is a procedurally generated zombie survival game. Go ahead and mm. check it out. It's at thedeadlinger.com, and it's. Um, it's Put being that in chat so that I can. Uh, so I can check it out. Uh, I'll pop it in the chat for the uh, the audience as well. All right. Um, now, I think we've kind of worn a little bit on E3, though I'm sure we can go back to it again mm -hmm. a little bit later. Uh, Comic-Con. San Diego Comic-Con's harassment of women. Yeah. Where to begin? <laughs> oh, yes. 
Well, you know... <sighs> I'm just gonna say it. Boobs. Boobs everywhere. I'm just, all a big fan of boobs. I, I, boobs. I love them. So many boobs. And uh, they're on display. And, Quite uh, often, they're, <laughs> they're, they're on display with the... Ex- down to almost nothing more than uh, tape covering nipples. Yeah, really. It's like this, <laughs> honestly, like this. This is no. Like, how is this really any different from the slut walk debate? Oh gosh! Well, there... it, if you understand the feminist mindset, it's different because they say it's different. It's, okay, like yeah. don't get me wrong. I am. I am a fan of cosplay, and I've seen some really, really good cosplays. However, I've seen some really slutty cosplays. And I don't mean cosplays that are revealing. I mean cosplays of characters who don't actually wear revealing clothing, but the cosplayer has has created revealing clothing just to use her tits or her ass or her camel toe to get more attention. Yeah, and yeah. those are the those are the attention horrors. I've actually, I'm actually a fan of a lot of cosplayers. I will plug a few right now with like Yaya Han, uh, Katie Cosplays, uh, Riddle's Messy Wardrobe. Follow them on Facebook; they're actually phenomenal. And you know they, um, they actually for the most part stay true to their. Uh, to the characters and the costumes, and they do such a wonderful job. And they're great people as well. I've had yeah. several interactions with them. They're 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 wonderful. They're wonderful people to talk to when you get a chance to. But then there's also some who are just like wildly out there. Who, yeah, like he said, uh, they're wearing costumes where it's basically a bikini. And they're saying, a bikini and a mask, and, oh, I'm that girl! It's like, go away. Uh, the thing about it is, is that they know exactly what they're doing. I mean, they, they're, they're always out there feigning innocence, like, I'm just here for, you know, to, to, to nerd it up with the rest of you guys. And they're like, no, bitch, you are doing this because you want attention. And, and, and we know that you want attention, but when you get the attention, you complain about it. Like if if you're gonna cosplay a character like uh, I don't know Riku from Final Fantasy X, uh, now okay, in some scenes Riku is uh, you know she she's wearing some you know pretty sexy revealing clothing, um, and and that I really don't have a problem with. You know you're cosplaying a character and the character in the game actually does wear. Uh, uh, that clothing, sure, fine. But if you want to cosplay uh, a character like Yuna, for instance, who doesn't really wear anything revealing because she's such an innocent character, then don't wear a bikini and call it a Yuna cosplay. Right. And, I mean, I don't have a problem with... There's also another one I, I follow named Jessica Negri. She does. She does. She does everything with showing off her boobs, and she's got a nice set. I'm not gonna lie. But the problem with it is, is she doesn't go out of. She actually doesn't go out of the way to show off her boobs so much as you know. It's like ninety five percent of the attention is focused on the costume when you look at it. And the other 5% is the boobs. Yeah, I'm not going to hate on people, you know, showing off their assets. Not even, not even a little bit. But, but don't, don't come out there wearing practically nothing and then say, Oh my gosh, avert your eyes, you perv. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna, if you're going to come out and you're going to show off what you've got, by all means... Be honest about it and say, "Hey, I'm out here to show off what I got." If you're here to to get to get attention, fucking say it. I'm here for attention. I I can introduce you to 500 guys who will be more than happy to pay you that attention that you crave. 
but unfortunately, it's no. I don't want their attention. I want the attention of the hot guy who's cosplaying a Spartan. Yeah, I mean, I I don't agree with if there is exactly you know harassment taking place, and if people are getting groped and, and things like that, you know, that's that's of course not okay. But you know, if you're taking something like like a hug. Or, or something like that, or a little bit of extra attention, like somebody is, is a little bit, you know, interested in you, and they and they ask for your number, that's not harassment. No, I agree with you. I mean, I, here, here's an example from one of the com- Comic-Cons when I was still dating my ex. She she and I were looking at t-shirts, she went, in, she went around to another part of the booth, and some guy walked up and smelled her hair. And I'm like... Okay, that's creepy. That's more than a little creepy, and I, 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 I have to agree with that. But from that point on, she basically never left my side, and I'm like, okay, you get one bad experience, and you don't want to go again. You don't, you don't, you don't want to do things on your own. I mean, what she's for, what pe- a lot of these people are forgetting is, yeah, you have one bad experience that's direct. You have ten thousand experiences that are indirect that you're not even paying attention to, of guys just kind of looking at you and some of them maybe even smiling and being nice. Yeah, I've heard some horror stories about some weirdos. Not just not not just uh, creepy guys, creepy girls. I mean. I understand I had a, I had a friend, um, I mean, we haven't spoken in a while, but I remember he was getting really heavily hit on, I think, by this chick who just had not shaved her legs for, like, I think maybe a year or something, and she had just grown out her leg hair, like, all poofy and stuff. It was really, really weird. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me barf. I know, dude. But, I mean, like, you, you are always going to have weirdos at these conventions. Always! Okay. Yes, and there's no, there's no way you could really, you know, there's no way you can eliminate that. I mean, it, all kinds of people are showing up to this. Well, so, it's, so it's, of course, there's going to be a couple of bad people in the bunch, you know. I, I, I'm going to go a little bit further. I mean, yes, these people are a little weird, and yes, maybe we need to police them a little better as, as a group, as the group of geeks and whatnot. And I'm not, I, I'm not even going to deny that, but. Sitting there and going out of your way to basically make it a hostile environment for them. I we we don't want to make it a hostile environment for women, but we're going to make it a hostile environment for the the small number of people who may not have any social skill. I, I'm sorry, that's I I don't understand. You know, we want to be a a care. We want to be good people, we want to be caring people, we want to take care of each other, but just because somebody doesn't like something, instead of taking the time and saying, hey, look, I don't like that, here's why I don't like that, I, I don't really care for how you did that, we're going to sit there and say, oh, no, 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 that's harassment, fuck you, go get, arrest them, get them out of here! No. No, I mean, it's it's really ridiculous, and let's be honest, some of these girls are absolutely going there hoping to pick up a guy. I well, mean, I, I, I'm not even going to go with just pick up a guy, I'm going to go with... Uh, they're, they're, um, they're hoping to go there and, and meet and ha- guys <laughs> like Will Wheaton, or guys like yeah. uh, Sir Ian McKellen, they're hoping to go there and meet stars, yes. like yeah. LeVar and- Burton. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, not just them. I'm gonna actually go so far as Chris Hemsworth and uh, Chris Evans, and they're trying to go there to meet and attract the attention of these these particular people, and they're yeah, trying not, to not, not the guests, not not the not the male nerds who were there as guests at the con, but the guys who are holding panels because they're on TV or they're they've been in some sort of science fiction show or movie. Yeah, and they're popular, and they're and they're they're rich, and, and, and status. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna happen, but you know. Status. Yeah, and I've Young I've actually status. had 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 to tell several women, you know, that I have a female friend. She's she's trying to become a makeup artist. She has no real interest in being in makeup, 
but she wants to become a makeup artist in Hollywood. And I'm like, and you can tell by her, her by a lot of her posts that that's what she wants. She is, she wants to be to be married to some guy who can monetarily fulfill all her fucking fantasies. So a, a message to all the you know my other you know fellow femras. You're not getting with Benedict Cumberbatch. You're not going to get with Loki. You're not going to get with any of these people. Be, be honest with yourselves. It's well, not I'm, gonna I'm, not even gonna, I'm not even going to say that to the female MRAs. I'm going to say it straight out to every female that's out there. You're not, the odds are you're not going to get with these guys. Because yeah, everybody, these guys... Everybody. <laughs> yeah. These guys have a pick of women in their 20s throwing their they're soaking wet panties right at their faces and what do you have to offer that's really gross dude i'm thinking about i'm thinking about that. well i'm talking i'm ta i'm talking about like the la ice crew or um oh god let's go with the females from agents of shield i mean you have these women on par with these guys what do you have to offer Got a point. Uh, I mean, the same goes for the guys. Let's be honest, dude. Dude, seriously, You're, it, it's not happening with with these these famous ladies. You know, <sighs> guys. Anybody out well, there? Did, did you guys? No, think I, I, but, I, I, but here's I, the I'm, thing, I'm though. I mean, I don't, I don't think guys. I don't think guys like. Guys don't go to Comic Con to try and hit on their favorite nah, sci-fi no. actresses. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't. No, think uh, that's what happens. At, least All the time. at least most of us don't. Okay, let let let's be fair. Okay, there are probably some who do who who are delusional enough to think yeah. that they can hit on, let's say, Troy from Star Trek: The Next Generation, and Please. actually have a chance. Okay, there are probably guys out there. That, that think that way, but 99.9% .9 of the guys who go to Comic-Con don't go there for that reason. Yeah, Mostly it's, it's vendors and talks and... Well, stuff. I've actually met several of the actors and actresses. Um, Mark Singer from V, he's actually... He, I, I, I kind of fanboyed with him, but, you know, I met, met him... And I talked with him, and I've had a conversation. I've had several conversations with him. I've met uh, some a couple of the actor uh, Dahan from Farscape, the actress who played her. I've met uh, the actress who played Jenny Callender from Buffy, and I've just sat there and had a good conversation, getting to know the people. You know, and that's that's what I love doing, and getting to know the people behind the, who are playing these characters. And I think that's what the majority of the fan, the fans do, as far as I'm aware, from what I've seen, just lingering around, listening to conversations. That's what the majority of the fans do is they get to know the people who are playing their favorite characters, just to just feel a little bit closer to that character. Well, I mean, I, I won't lie. If I ever get the chance to meet Katie Sackoff, I might try and make a pass. But that's just because it's Katie Sackoff. Well, you know what? If if Katie Sackoff was standing in front of me and you know we were having a conversation, I'd just it depend. I'll be honest. Depending upon how things progressed and where things went, you know, maybe I'd make a pass at her. Maybe I wouldn't. I mean, I I was standing in front of. Uh, even if I was standing in front of Scarlett Johansson, and oh my god, I've got a thing for her like you wouldn't believe. If her personality came off as something that just completely rubbed me the wrong way, I'd be like, yeah, you know, you're hot, but no. I wouldn't I wouldn't toss you my dick yeah. to, to save your life. Uh, really, I'd probably be interested. I mean, if I was going to something like Comic-Con, well, specifically Comic-Con, I'd probably want to run into that guy from Mythbusters, like, I think every year he just gets a, a costume that makes him completely unnoticeable, <laughs> and then he shows up. Oh, uh, not, not, not Jamie Hynum and the other guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember his name. Why has it escaped me? Oh, when my I, God. I mean, uh, gosh, it wasn't... It's Adam Savage. Yes, there we go. Yes, 
the he ginger. does go to yes. Comic Con every year. He he wears a a completely an, body covering body outfit. covering costume so that you can't figure out who he is. I think it was brilliant that Brian Cranston like showed up as himself <laughs> that one year. Oh God! Uh, there was one guy who actually showed up as as himself, wearing a mask of himself. Yes, that was Brian Cranston. Uh, and yes, he, uh, from Breaking Bad. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he was he was playing himself. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. And nobody oh, yeah. nobody had any idea. It was. <laughs> oh, here's here's one that uh, actually my father tells me this story from uh, the Doctor Who back with Matt Smith, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy this. Uh, Matt Smith and Jenna Coleman were coming into Comic-Con, and they were stopped at a light. They look over. They see people dressed as the Doctor and Clara. So Matt Smith rolls down the window, yells out, Hey, nice Doctor costume! And the guy's just standing there pushing a button, going whatever, <laughs> his like waves. And his girl, his girlfriend or companion, whatever, the girl who's dressed as Clara, is sitting there just going. And they're, both Matt Smith and Jenna Coleman are sitting there just going, "Hey, nice doctor costume, what?" And just going at it, trying to get their attention. And the guy's just like, "Whatever." And she notices, right? And like, she notices, on, and it's like, like this is—it's the Doctor and Clara. Come on! Okay, you—if if you go to a Comic Con or any convention, and and you cosplay as Doctor Who, as, as the Doctor, and you don't recognize Matt Smith, that's fifty. If you DKP don't rec- if you don't recognize, no, 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 that's that's a complete DKP white. <laughs> Take away your if you don't recognize the person you're cosplaying when you're doing it, get out. <sighs> pretty yeah, much. We're, take, we're like, taking that, away your card, okay? I mean, that, 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 that's, that's <laughs> pretty much, that's the million man land destroying your fucking gaming PC out in the street for cheating. Just get the fuck out. That's just so sad. I mean, it would have been like, oh my gosh, they're real. <laughs> it just would have been like, uh, the only thing that could have gotten me more than that is if they had, like, if they were in a truck and the TARDIS was, like, just on the back, just all fucking strapped on. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be almost <laughs> as great as, you know, Matt Smith walking out of the TARDIS that's almost always at Comic-Con. Yeah. And you don't even recognize that it's Matt Smith. I, even if he's dressed as the doctor. Oh, gosh. How could you not notice? Oh, man. I, I don't know. I, w- I, would, I, I, I would notice. So hard. So I would notice. So hard. <laughs> I'm not even the biggest it. fan of Matt Smith. I, I, I'm a tenant lover. But if hey, Matt Smith had done you. that, if Matt Smith had done that, I would have been like, oh my god! It's like, can I get in the limo, please, just to hang out for like five minutes, please? Had it been David Tennant just as the doctor, I would have lost my shit. Just completely. Just, ugh. I, I, I wouldn't go that far. I'm a little bit more cool and reserved when it comes to that. I mean, I like I said, I, I'm a huge fan it. of... Uh, but it, I know it's Tennant. I love Tennant almost as much as you do. We've had this conversation before, but I still would have been like, I, I wouldn't have let it. And I, I was just informed by my father, Matt Smith told that story at Comic Con. During the Doctor Who panel. So. So, what have we learned today? We've learned. People suck. They're yeah. trying to destroy geek culture. Yeah, and uh, and we've also learned um, that they're, they're uh, generally wrong. Yeah, that just because someone has their tits on display doesn't mean that they aren't an insufferable cunt. I'm gonna have to agree <laughs> with that one. And generally, they, uh, in some cases, they may not have their tits on display and are still. An insufferable cunt, Sarkeesian. Ugh. Yeah, we, and and we know that if if Anita Sarkeesian doesn't remove that tree from her ass, eventually it's just going to start growing out of her mouth. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a sight I just did. 
did not need. Cause <laughs> that that kind of brings my uh, thoughts back to uh, a movie I once watched with. Uh, oh God, uh, not Christian. Uh, t- fuck it, forget it. Well, I'll find it and talk about it later, so- some other time. Uh, well, I. Oh, we've been going for about an hour and a half now. I think it's. Uh, I think this is actually a good place to wrap up. Uh, uh, does anybody have anything they'd like to say, passing remarks, before we close off? Sarkeesian's a cunt. <laughs> she stole what I was going to say, but I do have another one. David Futrell, fuck off. Yeah, and, fuck uh, yourself, David. And uh, I'm going to take this time to plug a... I'm doing a four-hour stream on Twitch starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, which I have to go get ready for. Uh, but if you're interested, I will post a link to it. It's at twitch.tv slash toyed. Uh, the link will be posted in chat, and I will be playing Majora's Mask with my friend Shadow. Um, and we'll just be talking about E3 and our excitements and our disappointments about it. So go ahead and check that out if, uh, if you're interested. And I think we'll leave it there. Uh, yeah, just remember, take the red pill. Horizontal.